Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at another new family of compounds called the amines. Amines are based on the ammonia structure. So ammonia is a nitrogen with three hydrogens attached in a pyramidal structure with a lone pair on the top there. Amines are based on their structure where the H's are replaced with alkyl groups. So a primary amine has this structure where one of the groups has been replaced with an alkyl group. In a secondary amine, two of the hydrogens have been replaced with alkyl groups. And in a tertiary amine, three of the all three of the hydrogens have been replaced with alkyl groups. Now the alkyl groups that are attached on a secondary or a tertiary may all be the same or they might all be different. We will look at the properties of the primary, secondary and tertiary amines later. First of all we're going to look at naming. When we are naming um, the amines, a amines, you need to name the alkyl chains alphabetically and then put the word amine on the end. So here we have a primary amine and the chain that is attached has two carbons in it so we would call this ethyl amine. Okay, just all one word. For this one here, we've got a chain with one, so that will be a methyl, and a chain with two, so that will be an ethyl, so we need to put them alphabetically. So this is ethyl, methyl, amine. And then our final example has three methyl groups attached, so we're going to use a prefix here, so this one is trimethylamine. For these examples, I want you to first of all classify them as primary, secondary or tertiary and then try naming them. So in this first example here, we have a nitrogen with three alkyl groups attached to it. So this is a tertiary amine. This one here is a nitrogen with a one alkyl group attached, so it's primary amine and so is the last one. When it comes to naming them, here we've got two methyl groups and one ethyl group. So remember this bend here means we've got a CH2 group. So we're going to put the ethyl first. So we've got ethyl and then we have dimethylamine. So although we have the di part here, which we'd alphabetically put that first, it's the methyl that is the important part. So we have ethyl dimethylamine. This one here we have a chain of three, it's been drawn in skeletal formula, so you've got one, two, three carbons. So this one will be propyl amine. And then finally this one is one with a branch. So here we have one, two, three carbons, so that would be based on propane. But we also have this um, methyl branch on the second carbon. So if we count from where the amine is, we've got one, two, so this will be... 2-methyl propyl amine. The properties of the amines depend on whether or not they are primary, secondary or tertiary. So the primary and secondary amines both have NH bonds whereas the tertiary does not. This means that primary and secondary amines have greater boiling points than tertiary amines because they can have hydrogen bonding interactions between their molecules. All of the amines are slightly soluble in water, especially the smaller amines, um, including the tertiary because the lone pair on the nitrogen is able to 
bond, uh, hydrogen bond with the H from the water as such here. So you can have an interaction with water with the tertiary amines as well. Finally, let's have a look at the reactions that amines can undergo. So the first reaction is that we can react our amines. So here we have ethyl amine and we could react this with an acid. So if we look at reacting with a mineral acid, like hydrochloric acid, HCl, in this reaction we would end up getting, if we just draw this out, So this part here is ethyl ammonium and then the chloride. So we would end up with a salt. So it's an ethyl ammonium chloride salt. So just like ammonia would react with HCl to produce ammonium chloride, here it's just an, a substituted ammonium. So we have ethyl ammonium chloride. In this next reaction, we have ethyl amine reacting with methanoic acid, so with carboxylic acid this time rather than a mineral acid. And here we are going to get ethyl ammonium methanoate, which is another salt. But if we heat this up, then we can create an amide, so we can change this, we can drive off water and we can, we can form an amide. So this would be an amide. So in a reaction with a mineral acid, you'll get a salt produced. In a reaction with a carboxylic acid, you will get a salt, and then if you heat it, then you'll get an amide produced. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter, Miss Adams Chem, for regular updates on new videos. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one. Bye!